What's going on guys, it's Zenix here back with another video for you guys, and today we're going to be telling you how to get through Vosik the Arc Priest, pretty much the second boss in the raid for Destiny Rise of Iron. Now he's really not a hard boss at all to get past, um, as you can see though there's engrams all over the freaking place because how long it actually took us to get past him. Not because, you know, we didn't know what to do, it's because, you know, we had that one person in our fire team that has absolutely no idea what's going on and just keeps dying. So we should have probably replaced him a lot sooner than this because it took us about a couple hours just to get past this one guy. But I'm going to tell you the method that we used that would work every single time before our teammate died. And that is pretty much just have two people on each side. You kind of have to have this method anyways because of the way of the order everything goes. Now there will be balls that drop down from the ceiling. Um, pretty much little charged balls. Um, we just kept calling balls. I don't know what the hell. Charged cores. Whatever you want to call them. Either way, they'll drop down from the ceiling. And then you'll have to pick them up and throw them at the boss simultaneously. Meaning that they will actually all have to hit the boss at the same time. Or at least, you know one second intervals because otherwise if you throw them too late then the shields won't actually get damaged enough because the way it sets off his shields is that the first ball will do about a thousand damage and then the next two after that will do about a hundred thousand damage so if the first ball misses then you're only going to do a thousand damage with the other one and then a hundred thousand with the other one so it's just really not that much damage and then you'll have to keep going on and on and on now this is pretty much just rinse and repeat for every single time every go through until you take down his shields on um, the third time if you do this correctly every time by throwing them simultaneously and you get the two huge damages down on his shields to the point where there's only literally you know 25 percent left and you know the next run you can get the shields down all the way then captains are going to spawn on each side there'll be one in the middle one in the right and one in the left the captains will spawn right before the third round of throwing the balls. Now these captains can be a really big pain. Now what we did was we had one person with a sword on each side to quickly take care of the captains and then the other ones ran Galahorn or whatever other heavy you guys like and then you know we'd shoot out the boss with that once the shields were down. Now if you actually do this correctly though you don't actually have to take down the captains because after you drop his shields the captains will die off and you don't even need to focus them. But if you have a little mishap and one of the balls does miss, then you're going to need to kill the captains because they will not despawn if those shields don't go down. So if that does happen, make sure to kill the captains if you know you're not going to be able to take those shields down. Kill the captains, throw the balls at them, and then boom, wait until next round until you know you can actually get the shields down fully that time and then you don't have to worry about the captains at all. So every third round, they will spawn. You'll have the first chance to throw the balls, then it'll be the second chance, and then once the shield is down 25%, or if you guys, you know, fumbled it, then boom, you know, wherever you guys are at on the shield rate, I don't know. Otherwise, at that point, you guys are just going to have to, you know, rerun it one more time, but just to make sure to take down those captains. Now, every time the shield goes down and you guys do all the damage, there's four rooms, two on each side, and they will be kind of, you know, lit up. And when it's one of them's lit up, you want to have that whole team go into that one room. Once all the team is in the room, then you're going to want to shoot this little panel on the side door. And pretty much when you shoot the panel, it'll close it down like there'll be a Pikachu barrier in front of you. And pretty much what this does is saves you from the explosion that's about to happen from the boss. And then you guys can go back out there and rinse and repeat and do damage again. One of the biggest problems that me and my right team had after a while was the monitors. Now, people kept forgetting to shoot the monitors. Monitors are all around the place, mainly just behind the boss. I don't know if the ones on the side of the walls can actually count. There's a couple on the right side of the wall on the right side, and then there's one on the left side. I don't know if those can count to be shot at, because what happens is there will be a little mark that appears on one of the monitors behind the boss, and then the whole team has to shoot it. It doesn't have to be the whole team, but it, it helps if you know most of your team is shooting at it to take it down fast. Pretty much if you don't shoot the monitors, there's going to be a big explosion that happens, and this explosion happens no matter what after you take down the shields and do damage, but this one can be an extra explosion if you guys don't be careful and shoot down the monitors and you know make sure that it breaks and you get that symbol down and out of the way, and then once you shoot that, then boom, you're good to keep going and you'll be fine. Pretty much these monitors will activate after every round of balls, so once a ball drops, you throw the ball, you get ready for monitors, and then you shoot the monitor, monitors are broke, get ready for balls again, and then just keep going back and forth. This, this boss fight's really just a lot of rinse and repeat. I mean, a lot of the boss fights are as well, but he was actually pretty easy to get a hold of really fast on how to fix a strategy up. For actually doing the damage part, what we did is we had a Weapons of Light Titan and then a Tether thrown at the boss, and then we just kind of all ran to middle, he threw the Weapons of Light down on the ground, we're all in middle, shooting the boss, dealing massive amounts of damage. You could do it some other way if you want to. Um, you could still stay on each other's sides if you guys have a couple more Titans than just one. We had two, but one was running Sunbreaker because it actually did do a lot of damage with Tether, so he just ran with that, and then the other one ran Weapons of Light. Not too much else to be said here. Um, 
pretty much that is going to be it. You just want to keep rinsing and repeating that. Um, after you get them below 50% health, obviously there's a second phase, and that time there will be shanks spawning in, but they're really not that hard to take care of. All you have to do is just kind of shoot the exploders in the air, and you can kill them all in the big huge group, and then boom, those are done. Otherwise, there's sniper, uh, sniper shanks that appear all the way in the back, but they're very easy to take care of. Ad control is just absurdly easy in this, except for the captains. That's literally it, and they will not spawn until the third round of you throwing the balls. Uh, recommended weapons for this part would definitely, like I said, be those swords, one person with each sword. Um, Gallahorns are really effective as well, otherwise a high impact sniper. I was using the one from the drop of the Sepix Prime Strike. Now, was that really the best? Not really. Um, the three bullets in the magazine didn't really help me out too much in that situation, but it still did massive amounts of damage. If you feel like you can use a better sniper, then go for it, otherwise that's probably the best you can do. Uh, I was using a scout rifle. It was okay. It really just didn't prove to be the best, and in the raid in general, I don't think scout rifles can really, uh, you know, dominate the raid. It's mainly auto rifles and pulse rifles that I see that could do the most in this part of the raid. So if you guys have a Zalo, you could probably use that if you want, or just a coast off. Otherwise, Gallahorns and Swords, that's your best option at the moment. And then some really high impact snipers. That's pretty much all for this walkthrough. Pretty, pretty easy part. Um, if I fail to, you know, explain something that was very vital to you guys, make sure to leave a comment in the comment section down below, and I will let you guys know what to do. Otherwise, that is pretty much all. Thank you guys for watching. Please come like, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.